Good morning, YouTubers. How's everyone today? Well, the dogs have an agenda this morning, and I think I'm going to have to do something about it. They're little birds and squirrels and kitty cats and different things down here in these bushes. And Precious is always trying to get to it, aren't you, baby? Yes, Precious is the great hunter. She can smell them and she can hear them. So she goes in here between the box and this fence, and she pushes the fence out. She pushes it, pushes it, and then she digs a big hole down in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these close. Excuse me. Move your face, please. Thank you. I'm going to pull these close, and I'm going to put a stake right here on this side and one on this side and see if I can keep her from doing that. Okay, I know you love to dig, but it makes a big mess, and I wouldn't want you to get out of the fence, because it's kind of dangerous down there. I know you'd love to go down there, but there are some other critters that hang out down there called coyotes, and we wouldn't want that. I might have to put one at the other end of the box also. Every day I find amazing things in my garden. And to me, this is amazing today. Back here behind this tree, the snow peas are growing really well in the ground. They're not protected, and they only get late afternoon and early morning sunshine. Interesting, huh? We learn things about our own property every day. I love how I can stand at this corner of the house and I can see all the buckets here. I can see buckets down behind the car. And I can see all the buckets here. Isn't that amazing? And I can see the tree cuttings over by the shed on those wooden chairs. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Yeah, right there. So from this spot, I can see everything that's growing. And I can see the bottle brush tree over there on the other side the shed. <laughs> Just look at this corn plant. It's gorgeous. It's later in the day and so far it looks like the poles have held and Precious didn't get into the box of dirt. Yay! That's good. I want to show you my purple beans. Okay. There they are. You see down at the bottom here? Something has been chewing on the delicious purple stem. <laughs> and this morning, this leaf doesn't look good. These leaves are limp. But, there's a new shoot right in here. See that one? And they're these little leaves that look okay. So I don't know. I don't know, but I do know one thing. Purple vegetables in the garden are supposed to be very nutritious. So I can imagine that's why whoever it was was chewing only on the purple part of this bean plant. This is the first time I've tried beans and 
I've had a couple that grew to about two inches and then they were done. So I'm not sure if it's my conditions, if it's the weather, or what. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. So I'm going to watch it during the day and see if it perks up or if it really can't make it. The grapefruit I've been using as roly-poly... Um, let's see. Huts, I guess you could call it. Or traps. <laughs> Roly polies get in here and then I get them out. There's one right there. And then I just take them to some other place in the yard where I'd rather have roly polies and I and I let them go out over there. For example, I have a stump of a tree over here. And that's a good place where roly polies can do their work. But they don't necessarily have to chew on the vegetables. Everything I read on the internet says that they don't do much damage in the garden. But um, I do notice I'm chewing on some of my vegetables. So I'd say all in all, the grapefruit traps are working. Just a side note on the roly polies. When I was a little kid, my dad was a fisherman, so we spent many hours fishing and cleaning fish, because he was a good fisherman. We always had something to eat. And when I smash these roly-polies, they smell the same as when we cleaned fish. Hmm. Interesting, huh? So here's an interesting observation of plant life in my buckets. And that is that early in the morning, I feel the soil, and it's moist, and it's just the way you would want a house plant or a garden to be. It's not soggy, it's not dry, it's just right. And I may have mentioned this before, but by the hot afternoon here in the Southern California desert. These buckets are bone dry. I can't say bone dry all the way to the bottom, but I can say that if I stick my finger in, they are dry down to probably an inch. And so, um, when I water them in the morning, it always seems like I really don't need to water them, but by one o'clock, I am sure glad I did. And we don't have a cloud in the sky today. So we know it's going to be a nice, nice warm day. For the birds? I think we're listening to uh, an American crow. And... A Bewick's Wren. So just in case this purple bean doesn't make it, I planted two more in the pot here. That's kind of been working for me. When a plant is not making it, I plant some more. Well, the great lizard hunter has found a lizard. Precious, chased it out from under the cooler. Buddy jumped on it, pulled its tail off, and the tail keeps moving. So interesting, huh? The lizard is just sitting there kind of stunned. I think it's a California alligator lizard. It has the long pointed nose. somebody to look at it. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. But his tail is still here. Let's see what Kiki does with the tail. Tail is still wiggling. That 
was some exciting lizard hunting, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty interesting means of escape for those lizards. They just leave their tail behind. I'm checking out the temperatures in the compost bins. And this one here is about the same as the ambient temperature, just a little below 70. So not much happening here. Let's try this one. This one is actually my active bin where I keep adding more green matter and more brown matter. We'll be back in a minute to check this. Okay, this one is up to a little above 80. And again, the ambient temperature is a little below 70, so we got a little activity in here. I cleaned up along the driveway and brought in a lot of this material. It is the flowers off the oleander falling down from the neighbor's yard. And it just looked like it would be good in the compost bin. I'm going to keep the compost covered today with the cardboard because it's going to be a hot day and I want to keep the moisture in there. So it's looking good. I should say they're looking good. Yesterday, I put my most finished compost in a big cup, and I watered it, and I had another cup of finished compost that I planted some tomato seeds in and put in this bucket. I just wanted to see how plants would grow in the best compost that I have. So far, whenever I've planted, I've added my compost to the potting soil. So this will be a first. It's going to grow in pure compost. So that's it for today. It's the Snowbird Gardener signing off. Remember, Jesus loves you. He is the exact image of the invisible God. I'll see you next time. Mwah. Adios.